Page 583, Obama feels like he needs to defend his his counterterrorism record against Dick Cheney. So Dick T Cheney is criticizing him for not being hawkish enough against terrorists. And Obama's like, listen, like I, I've done plenty of stuff. He says that Cheney's assertion that my administration wasn't treating al-Qaeda as a military threat was hard to square with the additional battalions I deploy in Afghanistan. So he's like, I'm more hawkish than you were on, in Afghanistan, Dick Cheney, and I won a Nobel Peace Prize doing it. Or the scores of al-Qaeda operatives we were targeting with drone strikes. And I expanded the drone program. So take that, Dick Cheney. So this is like one of two places in the book Obama talks about drone programs, which is similar to his administration in that he never, or he very rarely discussed like the, his drone programs at all. He'd make jokes about like, uh, you know, predator drones blowing up the Jonas Brothers at White House correspondence dinners. The Jonas Brothers are here. They're out there somewhere. Sasha and Malia are huge fans. But uh, boys don't get any ideas. I have two words for you. Predator drones. You will never see it coming. You think I'm joking? <laughs> uh, but the actual legal rationale and scaffolding and protocols for the drone program were almost never discussed by the Obama administration because the press corps pretty much never asked him about it. In fact, the biggest question I ever saw, uh, most direct question I ever saw Obama answer was in like a Google Hangout with some kids and one of the kids like just on a whim asked him about it, something that all of the New York Times and the Washington Post and CNN wasn't able to think of. Um, and that's because they're, they've accommodated themselves to the system. And so for them, uh, you know, antagonistic journalism means um, you know, you know, badgering Trump about, uh, you know, politically incorrect tweets or if it's Obama maybe complaining about his beige suit. But in, in terms of like American militarism, we're not going to really question that too much because that that's the uh, the knife that butters our bread as well. Um, and so that's that's just how it goes. And so if we had an actual adversarial press that was actually interested in holding people in power into account rather than kind of licking the boots of Obama and the Democratic Party and the establishment and the military industrial complex and then just kind of focusing focusing on like TMZ level, like surface level nothings and, and riling up your side in that way while all the major important decisions are agreed upon and therefore not scrutinized by the press. If we had that, then they would be asking him about a number of things with the drone program. Like there was a leak during the second half of the, the Obama administration, uh, it's called the drone paper. Uh, the drone papers to the intercept, uh, which uh, showed that during a six month period, 88%, uh, I believe, of all the people that were killed in drone strikes were not the intended targets. And so like nine out of 10 people almost that are being blown up are not the people that we actually, you know, try to blow up, blow up. Like imagine if that was happening in the US that Russia or Germany or China or whoever it was saw that there was like, these guys are, you know, these are threats to China or whatever it is. And so they just blow them up extrajudiciously without comment. And then nine other people are killed around him. Would that, and would that cause the U.S. or people within the U.S. to not view China or Afghanistan or whatever country was doing that very well and maybe inflame uh, terrorism and extremism against that country? Yes, that's exactly what it is. And so Obama's bragging here to B Dick Cheney that he's being extra hawkish is actually uh, kind of like an acknowledgement, if you actually think about it, that Obama is accelerating the Cheney program as well as radicalizing the very terrorists that he claims to be undermining, which is why like the Middle East is not, are we more more secure now than we were in 2002 like you know there's there was no isis before the all of syria is fractured afghanistan it's the same exact thing with the taliban controlling almost the exact same amount of land as 20 years ago iraq is still a quagmire the whole middle east is smashed to bits largely because of the invasion of iraq but also because of policies like this which aren't scrutinized by the press um and so 88 percent uh civilians are killed um actually uh, and it's still, it's actually the policy of the Pentagon, of the of the military, to count every military-aged male in a drone strike as a terrorist. And so, uh, th like, th despite that, there's still tons of civilian casualties, but they're counting people that they don't even know the identities of as a terrorist just because they were in the proximity and therefore killed as collateral damage um, uh, of people that they also still don't know are terrorists but think might be terrorists. Like, a lot of the terrorists, uh, they don't even know the names of, they just have the, uh, the cell phone records of. This was was also, I think, an intercept story um, that they uh, they would just blow up people based on their cell phones, and that's how they got the, the data for it, and then as well as tons of people around them. And so this is the Obama administration's drone program.
and and there's no scrutiny for it. He'd also do it with American citizens. So Anwar al-Awlaki was a Muslim cleric uh, who kind of became radicalized and then would give speeches on YouTube, which other people would listen to, and they'd become anti-American. And Obama just decided at one of his Terror Tuesday meetings, uh, we're going to need to blow up this guy as well. And there was no comment from it. It's like, is that a good precedent? Like, there are lots of bad people out there. There are murderers. There are rapists. There are bank, you know, thieves. There are there there are lots of bad people out there. Do is it? A good thing that a President Trump or a President Palin um, now has a precedent that you can just go out and drone bomb an American citizen without a trial? Like, is that a good thing? I mean, you, you could argue, okay, he's a bad person, but then that would also be an argument for torture, which Obama decided not to prosecute the torturers, but did say we shouldn't be torturing people. Well, why shouldn't we be torturing them? They're terrorists. Or why should we, like, why shouldn't they, why should they get trials or go um, not be held in a Guantanamo Bay for 20 years? They're terrorists. Um, the reason is, is because, like, you're supposed to be better than the the terrorists, and you're supposed to have things called civil liberties and the rule of law, which dictates what happens in a civilized society, unlike the terrorists. But instead, Obama is acting as a terrorist president um, and blowing up people from the sky without comment while receiving his Nobel Peace Prize. And actually, coincidentally, um, uh, Malala Yousafzai, when she visited the White House, mentioned this to Obama, that, uh, hey, like all these people in Pakistan, they're not very happy that you keep blowing all of them up um, with your drones. And Obama's like, you know, this, I don't really want to hear it, little girl. This is for the photo shoot. But it's absolutely true. Like, you can't just blow people up and expect. And so blowing up tons of people uh, that are collateral damage, doesn't even know the names of people that he's blown up, um, just has their cell phone numbers, um, radicalizing other ones, bragging to Dick Cheney that it's, uh, you know, that's just how it goes. And then also doing it to American citizens, including the son of Anwar al-Awlaki. And so like a couple weeks or months after he killed al-Awlaki, he killed his son also, whose name was uh, Abdul Rahman al-Awlaki, who was like a 10-year-old kid who was not radicalized at all. Um, and he just blew him up and the Obama administration didn't comment on it at all except for to say, well, I guess he shouldn't have had such a bad dad. As if like, uh, you, like, like you can intergenerational guilt, um, you just blow up other Americans. And then Trump actually, uh, during his term, blew up his sister also, who was like an eight-year-old girl or something else um, as well. And this was, so this is the Obama administration and uh, this is all Obama has to say in a 700-page book about the whole drone program. He's mentioned it like in a couple of sentences and it says a lot about the media and, and about U.S. political culture, that something like this just can just not no comment at all. Imagine like I'm sitting here under the sky. Sometimes there's like crows flying above my head and things, or the wind comes, or I hear a deer, and I'm kind of scared. Imagine if like you know you're living in Yemen or Pakistan or Afghanistan or Somalia or Syria or Iraq or uh, and there's one more. There were seven countries that Obama was drone bombing, and it's just a regular thing that uh, you know just. Up above, like at any moment, they could be they could drone bomb your wedding. I think Obama drone bombed like five weddings or so, um, as well. A bunch of like they, they don't like they don't really know. There's a certain level of collateral damage, uh, which is pretty high when 88 percent at least of the people that are killed are civilians. That is just okay. And so he's drone bombing weddings. He's drone bombing here. He's drone bombing there. And then also that has like a chilling effect. Like imagine like at any time you go to the park, uh, maybe Afghanistan drones would bomb you from the sky and blow everybody that you know around you um that's not a good thing for uh reducing terrorism or or anxiety within those countries um and obama has nothing to say about it despite being the peace-loving humanitarian idealist that he tries to paint himself as he's a total fraud um and uh this is this is one of the biggest examples that he like can't even figure out how to mention it but is able to talk for pages and pages about how great larry summers and tim geithner are